Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and in today's lesson we are going to be looking at the idea of taking a simple melodic contour and expanding upon that idea rhythmically in as many ways as we can imagine in order to take our lines to the next level and be able to milk as much melodic content out of something incredibly simple. This will take your blues and jazz playing to the next level and also add a degree of consistency to your playing, giving your listeners really something to latch onto as you're repeating ideas. And as Adam Neely often likes to say repetition legitimizes. Uh, of course, I'm going to upload transcriptions for everything that I play in this lesson over on my Patreon page. If you haven't checked me out on there, please do go and consider supporting the channel. You can support me for as little as $1 and get lots and lots of cool stuff in returns. Hundreds of transcriptions on there now. So uh, yeah, you get a lot of cool stuff and uh, it's really very much appreciated all of your support over these years, guys. So thank you one more time, my wonderful patrons. Let's take a look at my guitar and talk through this concept. So first up, it's the first time my Gibson Howard Roberts has been on screen in a very long time. Uh, it's recently been, uh, had, it's had a fret dress on it, so it's playable now. Set up with some 12, so I'm probably going to play it a little bit jazzier than I normally would today. Uh, so as I say, the idea is taking what I would refer to as a melodic cell, a contour, if you like, uh, a road map. Uh, and it could be any road map you like. If you're looking at blues, maybe you take something simple like... <laughs> but I'm going to take something a little bit kind of more jazz bluesy. We're going to uh, start by sliding from the fifth fret into the sixth fret on the G string. That's the flat three into the three. We're all in A. So five into six. And then we're going to come down seven, seven on the uh, D and A strings. That's just a triad. Third, root, fifth. And then we're going to finish by playing the sixth and then the root. So that would be the fourth fret on the D string up to the seventh fret on the uh, D string. So as a line... It's, there's nothing really here. It's a melodic contour. It's not a melody at this stage. It sounds like this. It doesn't really sound like anything because I'm, I'm deliberately not giving myself any sort of a rhythmic context. I'm trying not to imply a beat here, which we are going to do as we move forward with this. So the first thing we want to do is, well, we want to give ourselves uh, some sort of beat. So if I feel a rhythm, one, two, three, four. That's my line, okay? Three, four. Two, three, four. So in its most basic form there, I'm sliding in on beat one. Then we're playing two eighth notes, two more eighth notes. And then I'm actually adding one more note at the end there on the last eighth note of the, of the bar. Uh, simple rhythmic idea, get comfortable with it. Two, three, four. Now you can see I'm adding a little bit of variation in there. Repeating the slide. Might play a little variation on the end. Double stops even. But at its core, the melodic content is still the same. Or melodic uh, cell, if you like. The contour, the, the, uh, the roadmap of the lick, if you like, is the same. So that's one rhythmic idea. But of course, there are lots and lots of ways that we can spice this up rhythmically. I might play one, two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Okay, simple again. If you see the notation on the screen there, the idea very simple. Uh, repeating the first two notes, ba ba da ba da bu da ba. A little bit of syncopation towards the end of the line. Rhythmic variation, right? Let's try another one. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. I'm adding that little double stop on the end there. Two, three, four. So again, I'm introducing a triplet now, another rhythmic device, right? One, two, three, four, and triple. Two, and three, and four, and one. Two, three, four. Simple rhythmic ideas, but just expanding upon them. Of course, we might take something where we don't begin on beat one. We might go one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. 
three, four, one. One. So I'm just trying to milk this idea in as many ways as possible. And what I like to do is rather than repeating the same idea over and over, I'll set myself up a little metronome. I'm not going to set up a metronome here. I'm just going to, you'll feel the pulse. I think my time feel is good enough that you should want to tap your foot to what I'm playing, even when a beat's not there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore this idea and just repeat it enough until I feel like I'm sort of either finding new things or getting bored with the idea. So one, two, three, four. Honestly, I could do that for you know 20 minutes and, and the idea is to just have fun with it. I really am looking for new ideas and trying to make myself want to dance. Now, all I've done there, of course, is one melodic contour. Uh, if you want to expand upon this lesson, the next step would be to take different melodic contours. So if I take something again, quite simple, uh, descending from the top of an A, kind of major pentatonic-y sound, if we start on the root, six to five, and then flat three to three, and then root note. That might be a little phrase, and I can start again rhythmically developing that. Two, three, four, one. So straight away, not starting on one, four, one. Try something different. Three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Let's try something different. Three, four. Helps if you hit the strings. Uh, let's try something else. One, two, three, four, one. One more idea. One, two, three, four. Now, simple rhythmic ideas. But of course, when you start putting these ideas together, three, four. Now, of course, the, the, the key here is to be able to apply this to any melodic contour, any line. So if I take something a little bit more bluesy, might be that. That's just straight eighth notes. I say straight, obviously I mean swung, but I mean no rhythmic interest. And then mixing it up a little bit, three, four. Of course, you can milk this to its logical extreme. And when I am playing around the neck, uh, you know, playing melodic ideas, if I play, you know, I have melodic content that I like to play around this area. Now you can see that these ideas start to come together.
could play around this endlessly. The idea is exploiting these uh, rhythming ideas. So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, go away and you know edit this video. But I'm, I'm going to transcribe everything that I played there and upload those transcriptions for you. But of course, the idea here is it's an oral skill. It's not a visual skill. I'll bring my face up for this. The goal here is very much to be uh, in in uh, in line with the ear. We should be hearing ideas. You should be able to click your thing fingers. Ba ba do ba da ba. Da da ga da ba, ba da ga da ba, da da bu da da, ba da ba ba. The idea is rhythmic rather than note based. So if you think more like a jazz drummer, or if you think more in line with like a great, uh, a great jazz pianist. So um, thinking of like Red Garland, uh, you know, my, one of my favorite jazz pianists. When you listen to Red play, uh, classic kind of bop vocabulary, uh, or you know guys like um, guys like Monk. Uh, you're going to hear loads of really cool Bud Powell ideas. You're going to hear loads of really cool rhythmic ideas. And sure, the pitch is important. But once you start applying cool rhythmic vocabulary to pitch contours that you're already familiar with, you will start to come up with some really cool musical vocabulary. So don't, while I was, obviously I want you to go and check out these transcriptions, it's not about learning what I played note for note. It's about being able to hear what I've done and imitate those kinds of rhythms with some of your own lines and melodic contours. Lastly, of course, I want to say a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. Couldn't do these videos without your love, kindness, and support, guys. So thank you so much for all of that. And uh, if you want to go check me out on there, again, link in the description. It is a great way to support the channel. It keeps me going. And if that doesn't suit, you can, of course, head on over to uh, Amazon and check out one of my books. You can, I'm looking for my latest book, Hybrid Picking Guitar Technique. Uh, I don't have a copy to hand, but that is also available on Amazon. So please do go and check that out. Leave me a good review over there. It is a huge help, and I do very much appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching all of these videos, guys. It's been a while since I've done a good lesson like this, uh, but more are coming. More are coming. I've just, uh, you know, I have to stay, have to stay very focused in order to do these things, and my attention has been very much on uh, other musical ideas for a while. But more on that uh, over the coming weeks, months, years, and lifetime. Much love, and I will see you for another video soon. Goodbye.